Hey everybody, it's Chris and Jamie from Steeda, and today we're going to be talking about 2015 plus spring choices from Steeda for your Mustang. What exactly that means is we'll do a breakdown of the different types of springs we offer and then break it down by application, street, drag, and track of what springs would be best for your application. So, Jamie, let's start it off. Let's talk about the difference between linear and progressive springs. Linear springs take a set amount of force to compress them a certain distance. Usually that distance is measured in an inch. Uh, say you compress the spring an inch and you have 400 pounds of force to move it one inch. Additional inch will take an additional 400 pounds to move it. A progressive spring, it, it's on a sliding scale. The first inch you move may only take 200 pounds of force. The next may take 300. And as you can continue to compress the spring, the amount of force goes up per, per inch of movement. So in the aftermarket spring offerings for the Mustang, we see a lot of linear springs and a lot of progressive springs. One spring that kind of sets Steeda apart from the rest would be the dual rate springs. How is that different? The dual rate is like having two springs in one. As you compress the spring on the primary uh, spring rate, once you get to a certain point of force to move it a, di a further distance, then you start getting into the second rate once that, uh, once that value starts to match. So you have a soft initial spring rate of, you know, 150 pounds, so it's nice and soft for the street. And then the second rate will be uh, significantly higher. It may be like a 500 pound after that. And we'll get into the advantages and disadvantages of the dual rate once we get to the handling section of the video. But the first question we ask, Jamie, when, when somebody is looking for springs in their S550 Mustang, typically is if they have MagnaRide, right? Uh, that's one of the first questions you need to know because MagnaRide rear springs are different than the conventional uh, Mustang rear springs. One is a left-hand wound spring and the other is a right-hand wound. Conventionally, regular Mustangs, both rear springs are right-hand wound. So that means if you have a MagnaRide Mustang, skip ahead in the video. That way we can go over the spring choices for that. But for most other Mustang owners, S550, they don't have MagnaRide, which we have a ton of different offerings for. Yeah, Ma uh, the non-MagnaRide cars, we have a lot more spring options than we do MagnaRide. So with that said, the next question we typically ask is what your split is. And by, by that we mean street versus drag versus track or road course handling. Um, and you know, it's a sliding scale, obviously. Some owners do more street, some owners do more drag, some owners do more track time with their Mustang, or a combination of all three. First off, we have this Q500 Enforcer behind us because it is the ultimate street car. And what that means is it's running our all-in-one best-selling spring, our sport progressive spring. Honestly, nine times out of 10, well, we'll call it seven or eight times out of 10, the sport progressive, so the Sport Progressive is usually the most popular choice. It gives you an increase in handling over production factory springs, including a performance pack. And it has a really good compromise in handling versus ride. The ride is still really good. And with the factory springs, obviously, that is a linear rate across the board. But with the Progressive springs, you get kind of the all-in-one benefit of a progressive spring. When you're cruising down the road, it's nice and smooth. As you lean into it, that spring rig gets stiffer where it needs to. And ultimately, you can have that confidence-inspiring feel when you're you know, handling a back road, but uh, on the highway, it drives real smooth. Yep, that's, that's why it's our most popular spring offering for these cars. And additionally in the street segment, the ultralight. So where that steps in is, is when people are a little bit more concerned about the stance or lowering the car a little bit more than you know, your average lowering spring. Let's talk about the ultralights. What application, what person would want an ultralight spring? They're gonna be a little bit lower than our Sport Progressive and the spring rate is going to be a little bit stiffer it's somebody that is going to spend a little bit more time taking their car to a track event or an autocross course, but don't want to go full into a set of dual rate springs or high end shocks, double adjustable shocks, things like that. Gives them the increase they need. Car is good and comfortable to be able to still drive it on the road. Handling is good. The increase in spring rate is noticeable with the linears over the uh, progressives but it's still not objectionable. 
And at the end of the day, that linear is going to provide a very linear feel, uh, meaning that uh, you have a constant spring rate. As that spring is compressing, you're getting the same kind of feedback through the steering wheel and through the seat of your pants as that spring compresses. Uh, so it may not be 100% as comfortable cruising down the road as the sport progresses, but you still get that confidence-inspiring feel as you're you know, carving corners. And the extremes, obviously, those are for the people that really want that stance. The, the extreme springs are aimed more at the show crowd. Right. Cars and coffee, people that are just taking their cars out to show. Uh, at the really low ride heights, those cars run with that spring. The geometry is a little bit compromised, but the spring is still completely straightable. And it's okay um, that it is a little compromised because they're not really trying to go break records on track or anything like that. It's all about how the car looks. These people are more concerned with how the car looks, uh, how it shows. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they're still completely straightable because the spring rates are not uh, not objectionable. They're, they're close to the same spring rates as the regular linear springs. They're just a shorter spring. And moving on to the minimum drop spring. So that's a spring we recently came out with in the past few years. Uh, and that is for the person that, let's say they live in a city or somewhere where there's a lot of curves that, or speed bumps that they're frequently going over. So they don't wanna necessarily lower the car too much, but they still want all the benefits that you get from a stiffer spring and a lowering spring. You know, that's where the kind of the minimum drop step in. The minimum drop spring is really good for areas of the country where the roads are rough. Right. Uh, the drop that we advertise is based off of a standard GT, mm -hmm. and the spring rates themselves, we took the performance pack spring and basically just took it to the next level with, uh, with spring rate and the difference between handling and ride. Still has a very comfortable ride, but it gives it a little bit more control. Now it's time to move on to some of our other spring offerings, specifically our drag springs. And what better person to talk about that than Scott Boda, our resident professional drag racer? <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> obviously we got a steed of silver bullet here. It runs a set of our drag springs. Uh, for a long time we had the front drag springs on there. Now obviously it's a coilover setup. But the rear drag spring mm -hmm. sits a little bit higher than some of the other ones on the uh, market but with a big 29.4 inch tall Mickey Thompson tire, we still got plenty of clearance. Uh, the beauty of the drag springs, they're super street friendly. So if you like to go to the drag strip a couple times a month while not ruining your ride or the creature comforts of your car, drag springs the way to go. And depending on application, we leave off the foot brake with this car. Some uh, customers, I was talking to one earlier this week in Bowling Green, he leaves off the foot brake and the back end was coming down a little too hard on the tire. So we offer spring spacers for that. So Perfect. we can really dial in that combination wherever you like it. And then for maybe some more of the hardcore guys, we've got our new adjustable rear ride height kit. So from a drag racing standpoint, once again, you might have your street wheels and tires, maybe you want to throw in a nice set of tridents or our friends over there at Velgen Wheels, lower the car down, make it look aggressive. A simple half inch socket drive, lower the car down, make it look good. Then you want to go beat it up on the weekends at the 1320, put on your big sticky Mickeys. You can raise that rear end right back up. I mean, it is just so super, super simple. Kind of got the idea off of our ever popular weight jackets for the Fox body. That's right. But uh, cool thing, and that kit also obviously works with some of our handling springs as well. For the track guys, testing out different spring rates and things like that, but uh, that's the beauty. I know uh, back in the day I kind of went crazy, right? You know, Fox bodies, we've got like two, three sets of springs. S550, we've, we've, we've got a spring <laughs> for everybody. I mean, it doesn't matter what you want to do. Want autocross, street driving progressives, drag racing, progressives, dual rates, linear springs, we got it also. But obviously, drag racing, my favorite. If I was more a street guy, be the progressives, so. No doubt. Yeah. Well, Scott, thank you so much. Speaking of handling and dual rates, let's jump to that one. Naturally, we have the 350 here because it is a handling-oriented car. This is running our dual rate springs, which is a great all-around spring, obviously track built for track first, and street second, but very comfortable on the street, especially with our Magnaride controller, which takes things to the absolute next level when it comes to the Magnaride. But I would even argue to say that this is more comfortable cruising down the highway than the factory springs altogether. Then again, when you get in that secondary rate, it takes things to a whole new level. 
right, Jamie? That's when things really improved. For sure. And Jamie, tell us a little bit about the R&D that went into the dual rate springs and frankly, what makes them so special here at Steeda. We spent a lot of time track testing that set of springs. Uh, multiple track events. Uh, we used a variety of cars. The 2018 HPDE car down in Pompano. Mm -hmm. The car we had before it, which was a 2016 Performance Pack GT that filled the same role. Uh, we tested them with our number 20 uh, road race car. Mm -hmm. And we also tested them extensively with our EcoBoost. And why are they so good? Uh, the rates match the weight of the car, essentially. It pairs well with handling and still having street manners. So we talked about the progressive spring earlier and how that's well for kind of an all-in-one solution. As you lean on the car on a back road, it's gonna give you more feedback because you're getting into a more progressive, stiffer rate. Why are the dual rates better than your standard progressive spring? It's acting like two springs in one. It still gives you the softer primary rate that allows the car to still be straight driven, but the, the rate at which it rolls into that secondary uh, spring rate mm -hmm. uh, is a very definite place. You can feel the car when it starts to roll in that it's stiffening up very quickly. Uh, it makes for a quicker responding car. And what I like about it is because essentially it's two linear rates, more or less, correct? Yeah, it's two linear rates. And as you lean into it on a corner on the track, you get into that higher rate, that very confidence-inspiring feel, and frankly, it's gonna keep the car flatter. It keeps the car a lot flatter. You don't have to rely on the sway bars as much. It doesn't require as much sway bar rate uh, to, to keep the car flat in cornering, and that also helps in uh, ride quality. And if you're looking for more information on sway bars, we have a whole video dedicated to that, and specifically, what sway bars are best for the application, and frankly, why it's the best first suspension mod that you should jump for. So in terms of Magnaride spring offerings, we have three. Jamie, tell us about them. We have the Magnaride uh, Progressive Sport. We have the dual rate for everything up to GT350. And we now have the new GT500 dual rate springs. And with the Magnaride, like we've said previously, one spring is right hand wound in the rear and the other's left hand. Which, so it's unique to the car. Right, which makes them unique to Magnaride cars. That's why they require a separate spring. So Magnaride Sport, we'll start with our most street-mannered, uh, softest spring of the three offerings. What situation would somebody want to get a Magnaride Sport spring? That would be the person that has a, a performance pack level one car mm -hmm. or an EcoBoost uh, HPP car mm -hmm. and want to more comfortable ride. They want to lower the car more than the factory and still maintain a comfortable ride. That would be their uh, initial spring choice. And the spring rates are obviously significantly softer in comparison to the dual rate, which is a more track oriented spring. But for the Magnaride sports springs, like I had them on my personal 18 GT and loved them, but because of that softer rate, nice and smooth going down the highway, but when you lean into it, you're gonna want a stiffer bar. You're going to want stiffer sway bars. You're definitely going to want to go with the uh, with our original adjustable bars, mm -hmm. as they have a especially in the rear have a higher rate. Uh, it'll help keep the car flatter because of the uh, tendency for the softer springs to roll. And speaking of rear sway bars and our adjustable rear bar, we just recently launched our competition rear sway bar, specifically catered towards those dual rates and stiffer track-oriented spring rates in the rear. Jamie, uh, obviously the Magnaride dual rates really complement that competition sway bar well. Tell us about the Magnaride dual rate springs. The Magnaride dual rate springs are the same spring rates as our regular dual rates, but like we said before, it has a left hand wound and a right hand wound rear spring. Mm -hmm. Spring rates are intentionally high to increase the response rate of the car. And the Magnaride dual rates obviously work well within the tolerances of Magnaride, correct? It works within uh, the, the height and speed range that the Magnaride controller was uh, originally set up for. And obviously we tested them a ton on this car and many other Magnaride cars as well, but our newest spring offering for S550, the Magnaride dual rates for the GT500. Let's talk about those. We made that spring to cater to the GT500 crowd. They wanted a specific ride height, mm -hmm. and we aimed at what they were looking for. 
Yeah, I mean, the base GT500 is lowered about, about a half inch uh, with our dual rate springs. And obviously you get that stiffer rate, you get the look you're going for, and that track inspired feel, but still smooth down the highway, especially with it being a heavier car. With those cars pushing 4,000 pounds right. by themselves without a driver, uh, they need a little bit more support right. and the spring, the higher spring rates give the chassis the support it needs. And it helps even out the, the ride height of the car where some of the cars from the factory had a little bit of a lower ride height in the rear. Right. It evens that out and corrects this, uh, the front to rear rake. And it's just all around a really good spring for that car. Awesome, and then jumping to our adjustable ride height system. Those work for drag cars, those work for handling and oriented cars, even street cars if they're looking for that adjustability, but uh, it also works for Magna Ride, right? It also works for Magna Ride because it doesn't uh, interfere with any of the factory Magna Ride uh, sensors or controls. All, everything is still in place, uh, doesn't mess with the rear shocks, it's mm -hmm. just replacing the rear spring because it has its own perch. It's not dependent on having left and right wound springs. True. And from a track or handling perspective, what person would want to get the adjustable ride height system from? That would be the person that primarily uses their Magna Ride car on the track. It's not the person that occasionally goes to the track or occasionally does an autocross track. These are dedicated people. This is a hardcore race part and it's intended for the people that are changing their springs at the track, they can do it quickly, easily, uh, make, make multiple changes and not lose track time. So that kind of wraps everything up in terms of all of our S550 spring offerings. There is a lot of information to digest here, so comment below and let us know if you do have any questions. And don't forget that the springs aren't the only part that really equate to the whole suspension equation. Sway bars are a huge part of it and how the car behaves on track, on the street, drag strip, etc. And in addition, when we're talking about Magneride, we do have our Magneride controller that is great for these Magneride cars, taking the damping to another level. And speaking of damping, our Pro Action, not adjustable and adjustable, our Pro Active shocks, all of these work in unison with the springs to totally change the dynamics of how your car handles anything you throw at it. And at the end of the day, all of these spring options that we talked about are street friendly. Everything was designed with the street in mind and other applications involved. So if you go to pick up the drag springs, don't expect the car to ride like a buckboard down the highway because it doesn't. All of these, all of these springs are street friendly, which is great. And that's kind of what sets our springs apart from a lot of the other springs out there on the market. So like I said, comment below, let us know if you have any questions. Jamie too, he checks the comments as well. Hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell, and don't forget the most important thing. Speed matters.